Mill Creek is a major tributary to the Smith River and is a forest stronghold containing some of the most spectacular old growth redwood forests on the planet. The Smith River is world renowned for being a salmon stronghold. It contains some of the healthiest populations of salmon, steelhead, and cutthroat trout in California. Abundant rainfall and a high level of watershed protection all combine to make the Smith River one of the cleanest and healthiest rivers in California. And healthy salmon populations require healthy watersheds. Located just south of the Oregon border, the Smith River is the last and largest undammed river in California and is home to some of the largest fish and largest trees on Earth. Salmon are forest creatures, and where there are big trees, there are often big fish. The forests of Jedediah Smith and Del Norte Coast Redwood State Parks are home to some of the last remaining old growth forests on the planet. And these trees are truly spectacular. The Lower Mill Creek Basin is home to one of the most complex forests on Earth and has been under park protection since 1929. But until 2002, the upper basin was owned by a private timber company who harvested trees and managed the land for commercial purposes. When the California State Park System took ownership of the Mill Creek property in 2002, it fulfilled a long-standing dream to unite the upper and lower Mill Creek watershed. Today, a collaborative team of state and federal agencies, individuals and non-governmental organizations are working to reweave the fabric of the ancient forest ecosystem long-term goal that will take decades, if not centuries. There are three areas of watershed restoration currently underway in the newly acquired Mill Creek property. Forest restoration, hill slope restoration, and in-stream restoration. Forest restoration involves thinning the vast plantation forests inherited from the previous industrial timber managers. It also involves growing and planting a diversity of conifer species back into the streamside zones where they are needed the most. Hill slope restoration consists of unbuilding the roads that were built in order to log most of the basin. Removing old culverts and reopening stream crossings prevents future catastrophic failures and restores fish passage. Removing perched fills on steep slopes reduces the likelihood of failure and restores hill slope hydrologic processes. The remaining roads that aren't removed are systematically maintained and upgraded. Eventually, a trail system will be fully established to provide additional public access. In-stream restoration seeks to restore the processes and functions to stream channels that have been cleared of debris for nearly 70 years. It turns out that this debris plays a critical role in making the channel complexity that provides good habitat for fish especially for coho salmon. The efforts underway in Mill Creek are an example of an integrated watershed restoration program taking place under the unified management of Redwood National and State Parks. With the forests and hill slopes in a state of speeded recovery and creation of complex wood jams in the stream channels, the Mill Creek property will get a rapid start on the path to recovery. Well, the primary objective of the Mill Creek property is to grow more old forest. But Mill Creek still has a long way to go until its forests can be called old growth. At Mill Creek, we have a very unnatural condition where Douglas fir predominates uh, over redwood in many places where that wouldn't have occurred naturally. And the density of trees is so high that the trees are actually struggling and competing with each other for growing space, for light, for water. We have an ecologically based program of forest restoration to uh, remove some of those stresses from the forest. This program involves thinning dense young plantations and replanting a diversity of conifer species in riparian and restoration zones. The nursery at Mill Creek is operated by Dan Burgess, a local community organizer and restoration practitioner. 
Dan has gathered seeds and sprouts and is raising them in a well-designed nursery near the old mill site. One of their key issues is genetic integrity. The seed source, again, is part of the genetic integrity program. We want to collect local material, find the source of the seed and the propagation material as close to the restoration site as possible. So that means within a mile, and if not within a mile, at least uh, 800 feet in elevation from that site. Thinning the vast stands of young trees is hard work and must be carefully coordinated with the road removal program in order to avoid difficult access situations. This investment of time and energy improves forest health and will decrease the time required to re-establish a forest stronghold on the Mill Creek property. I'll be dead and gone before this stand looks like it did historically, but if I can at least get the stand these forests on a trajectory or on a path that will help them achieve those conditions in the long term, then I'll consider my work here successful. When the California State Park System took ownership of the Mill Creek property in 2002, they inherited a legacy of land uses that left deep scars on the landscape. These scars consisted mostly of a huge network of roads, there's about 329 miles of road uh, within the park when we acquired it in 2002. And uh, we've been working since then to inventory the roads and make an assessment on how they're affecting the watershed. We're now actively working on those roads by either removing them or upgrading them to uh, afford some protection to the watershed. In order to promote the long-term health and productivity of both forests and streams, an intensive road removal program has been underway since 2004. Removal of steep fill slopes and culverted stream crossings reduces the likelihood of catastrophic failures. Removal of fish barrier culverts restores fish passage to areas that have been blocked for decades. Removing these roads not only makes ecological sense, it also makes economic sense. By Investing and removing the roads were actually saving a lot of money in the long term. A section of that road um, was approximately $400,000. It costs about $40,000 a year to maintain it. So if you look at the cost the, to remove the road, we recover our cost in about 10 years. And if you factor in some inflation, you're probably talking some, somewhere less than that. But the long term goal is ecologic. What we're doing here basically is removing these roads over time to build a strong foundation for the recovery of the watershed, and the forest, and the aquatic system. In-stream restoration efforts are intended to restore the processes that create healthy salmon habitats. Over 20 years of fisheries monitoring in Mill Creek has shown that fish numbers in the West Branch are much higher than fish numbers in the East Fork. This difference is partly due to the lack of structural wood in the East Fork and to the predominance of alder trees. Well, after a hundred years or more of uh, commercial wood extraction, the streams and rivers here have become so depleted of wood that their form was counterproductive to salmon habitat and the habitat forming processes that are related to wood. In order to restore these habitat forming processes, it is necessary to add a lot of wood. We've got forest restoration, hill slope restoration, where we're removing old logging roads, and those two activities have provided an unlimited, or nearly unlimited, amount of wood in all forms for us to uh, do the in stream wood loading. Our objective to restore process requires us to reintroduce vast amounts of wood that was similar to what occurred here over geomorphic time. Without wood, forest streams become simplified, often described as flumes or bowling alleys. Rivers with intact riparian zones deliver large volumes of wood to stream channels, creating complexity for fish by influencing the way water and gravel moves downstream. 
One of the main goals of the in-stream restoration program at Mill Creek is to build large, complex wood jams. We constructed this structure to increase overbank flows onto the floodplain on the left side of the channel. And as a consequence of that reconstruction or the emplacement of this wood, we have some complex side channel habitat that is formed that provides a velocity escape route for juveniles and adults to get out of the main flow of the channel. This type of in-stream restoration began at a small scale in the East Fork of Mill Creek starting in 2006. An additional 10 complex wood jams were constructed in 2008 and we are already seeing profound results. With time, the East Fork of Mill Creek will provide much better spawning and rearing habitat for the numerous salmon and trout that return to Mill Creek each year. With continued restoration efforts, Mill Creek will continue to play a critical role as both a forest stronghold and a salmon stronghold.